In this section, we're going to be looking at dimensional analysis. Now, before we get into really introducing it formally, I want you to take a look at this. We have a trapezium drawn. The formula for its area has been written down. But you should be looking at that and going, well, that's wrong. OK, I know that that's wrong. And one reason why you might be thinking it's wrong is because you know what the formula is. You know that the formula is 1 half h times a plus b, not 1 half h a times b. But it should also instinctively be wrong. Even if you'd never seen the error of a trapezium formula before, because what you're doing is you're multiplying three lengths together. And when you multiply three lengths together, you get a volume, not an area. Examples of that. If you were looking at the area of a rectangle, which has sides lengths of a and b, then the area is a times b. Two lengths multiplied together. If you were looking at the surface area of a cylinder, so h and the radius of r, then we've got two areas of circles, okay, the one at the top, one at the bottom. So the surface area would be two lots of pi r squared plus the area of the wrapper, which is 2 pi r times h. So 2 pi r squared is an area. The 2 pi, that's uh, dimensionless. But you've got two lengths, r and r, multiplied together. That's an area. 2 pi is dimensionless, but we've got r times h, two lengths multiplied together. So it's an area. And you're adding an area to an area, which we know we can do. OK? So if this had been written down as 2 pi r cubed plus 2 pi r h, then we would instinctively know that that is wrong, because this would be a volume. That's an area. We can't add a volume and an area together. So part of what we're going to look at is looking at whether a formula is dimensionally consistent. Does it make sense? Does that make sense? Does this make sense to be an area formula? OK, so that's part of what dimensional analysis is really about. Um, and we're going to look at behind the scenes of how we solve problems using it.